Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and I have a wonderful guest today with us, and her name is Jamie Lerner, and she's going to tell us a little about herself and what she does, and she has some really great things to tell us. So Jamie, why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody who what, who you are and what you're all about? Thank you. Um, so I am a well-being therapist. I used to be a psychotherapist for a long time, and I realized that uh, there was another way of assisting people in assisting themselves. So I gave up that practice and now I just do something very different, which is helping people get from where they are to where they want to be. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's a very fun process. Now you told me that you're very, you have a passion for self-love. Can you talk about that and tell us a little about um, your passion and how you use that to help others? Yes, I believe that the most important relationship is the one that we have with ourselves. And it is the foundation for every other relationship that we go on to create with another. So I think it is something that we um, often sidestep because we are so focused on the outside instead of redirecting ourselves inwardly and allowing ourselves to navigate from our inner being, our inner knowing, our connection with ourselves, our compassion for ourselves, our love for ourselves. And that sounds really big and scary for a lot of people, but it's actually the only way that we can connect with another is if we are able to reconnect in a loving way with ourselves. Oh, I totally agree with that. I think in our society, we are such a go-go society. We focus on everything, like you said, the outside world. We focus on work. We focus on our families. We focus on even, you know, society has put a stigmatized world around us. And we try to keep up with that world. And some people, you know, are so worried about pleasing others and trying to stay into that trend, you know, whatever is going on at the moment that they keep going and going and going and going, and they really forget about connecting with themselves. And I think what people don't realize is that when we don't connect with ourselves and we don't put it into incorporate it into our lifestyle in a daily routine, we can cause a lot of damage emotionally, physically, and spiritually to ourselves. How do you feel about that? Well, I think that um, when we are not connected to ourselves, it makes it very difficult for us to have the kind of connections with others that we are always longing for. So um, to really begin with ourselves, I think is such an important part of the process. Now, how would someone begin? Like, what would you say what the first step is? Like, how would how would someone learn how to reconnect with themselves so they could learn to love themselves? So I like to ask people to quiet the mind chatter, um, to sit with themselves for a few minutes every morning or at a time when they feel is the most ideal time for a quiet environment. And just to listen for um, their inner voice. And once they hear it, then they should throw themselves on the ground and laugh hysterically because nobody would talk to you the way you talk to yourselves. Yeah. I feel that we are very unkind in the way that we unconsciously and sometimes consciously speak with ourselves and to ourselves. And that realization in itself is very helpful because oftentimes we're so unaware because it is so familiar and it is doing us such a disservice and it's not even true the things that we're saying to ourselves and it doesn't matter where they came from or who they came from or when those things occurred I think what the most important things is to isolate it and to understand that now you are connected to a part of you that it's a lie it's not true yeah. Oh, I, 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 I agree a hundred percent with you. I think a lot of times, you know, we, 70% of our, of our, uh, of uh, our nation comes from a dysfunctional family. 
And you know, so so many times we we live in an environment that's not healthy, and we tend to carry those behaviors over to our own lives, and it you know, and then it affects the way we treat ourselves and how we treat others, and it's a vicious cycle that goes on and on and on. And I think people don't realize it until they actually hit rock bottom, and some people don't realize it at all, and until they you know, until they start hurting, and they don't realize it's sometimes because of the own their own way of treating themselves and the way they live that's actually causing all the pain they're actually self-inflicting pain into their lives and in slowly they're destroying themselves not even realizing it do you come across that a lot with your patients well i i think that it is the um unawareness that is the problem because once we become aware then we can make some choices about it mm -hmm. we could even make the choice that is uh, like i know i'm beating myself up right now and i know that i could change this narrative and be loving and kind to myself but i just feel better beating myself up and that's wonderful i applaud that because that is personal power you are mm -hmm. literally taking personal responsibility for doing something to yourself that is not serving you and that's okay. But when we are not aware, we tend to blame everyone around us, whether it's our parents, our society, our environment, our boss, our child. Right. and then we get further and further away from the possibility of having connection with ourselves. Right. We tend to use those excuses all day long, yeah. all the time. And there's right. no personal power in that. We become victims and I must say the society applauds the victim. However, being a yeah. victim doesn't feel good and it doesn't serve us in any possible way. Oh, a hundred percent. And what about people who fear change that they know there's something wrong. They know that they need to change the way they're living, the way they're caring for themselves and that they have to incorporate self-love into themselves, but they fear change and they fear they don't know what that new person is going to be like. So they're afraid to actually approach it or they're afraid to actually approach the problems and the issues because they just fear change overall. How do you feel about that? Well, uh, I like to think of it as making a shift. Mm -hmm. So we're not making a change. We're just making a shift, which I is like that. very small and very... Um, it's not intimidating and it's not scary. So when we make shifts, small little shifts, slowly we become more comfortable and feel better within ourselves. So for the so, people, I'll oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No. So nothing has to go fast or be extreme. So for the people who um, want to learn to, have, to incorporate self-love into their life, what are some steps that people could take to actually learn how to incorporate self-love into their life and to change their overall level of happiness and to move forward in a, in a healthier lifestyle? I believe that everyone has an idea of the kind of person they would like to attract mm -hmm. or even the people that they live with. And they have this fantasy of what they would like those people to do for them. Mm -hmm. So I suggest that you do those things for yourself, yeah. do for yourself that you are wishing others would do for you. And it could be as simple as taking a few minutes and sitting with a cup of coffee mm -hmm. or when you make your children's lunch, make your lunch first. Right. Or when you're, you know, driving to or from picking up your children or groceries, play something in your car or podcast or music that mm -hmm. nourishes and nurtures nurtures you to the connection with yourself mm -hmm. little things go a long way they it do. is a reminder that you are important I think that's a great suggestion. I think, you know, people have to learn how to put themselves first because how can you take care of others when you don't know how to take care of yourself? This is so true. And they tell you that when you get on an airplane, put your own oxygen mask on first and then assist others. And it's very counterintuitive for us for some reason, especially for women. We are the caretakers of the world. Right. And we are 
so not good at caring for ourselves. And we actually end up using all the people in our life as the excuse, and then we become very resentful. And it's a lose-lose for everybody. Right. It doesn't feel good to us. It doesn't feel good to the people we're caring for. It doesn't serve us in any way. It seems like when you when you have a lack of self-love for yourself and you're doing for others, I think resentment and anger could also become an issue because over time you're caring for everybody else and you're not caring the way you want for yourself. And everybody expe has expectations from you but then you're you're not doing enough for yourself. And then I think anger could actually be something that involve, evolves and it could actually, you know, kind of change the person's personality because they start to become resentful and they start to carry that anger. And sometimes you could even see it. You don't even know the person, but you look at their facial expression and you can tell they're not a happy person and whatever the reason may be. But, you know, if we start to learn how to take little exercises and you know, learn how to love ourselves, we could actually become a new new person and we can get rid of that anger. Is there any ex any exercises that you suggest for people who maybe do have a little anger or resentment because they keep doing for others and nobody's doing enough for them or they feel like they're not doing enough for themselves and they don't have the time to? Is there anything that you suggest? Okay. Once again, I think the awareness is so important. So if we are using our children needing assistance to get to getting to school in the morning is an excuse why we're not taking a half hour to go for a walk or exercise or have something to eat or drink a cup of coffee, just to become aware of how we're feeling about that interaction that we have actually set up. And then ask ourselves if we would like to change the pattern by simply taking 10 minutes consciously Mm -hmm. for ourselves before we begin all the other things that we're doing in the morning to assist everyone else and it's interesting when we do that we feel so much better and then we feel better we are better for yeah. all those people that we are servicing throughout the day because we have nourished ourselves nurtured ourselves done the things for ourselves <clears throat> that we are secretly wishing others would do for us I think um, when you talk about taking some time in the morning for yourself, it sounds more like in, maybe at meditation. Is it is it similar to meditation or is it a form of meditation that you're describing? It could just be going for a walk. For some people, they just want to exercise and the whole day has gone by and they don't have time or that's what they've told themselves. Right. So, you know, maybe to do like a half hour Pilates program or, uh, or get on your treadmill if you have one. Take all those clothes that you've put on there to use it for like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just do something for yourself. And if that means getting up a few minutes earlier, then you will be better for that. That sounds wonderful. That sounds wonderful. Now, you mentioned also that you have a book that you've written a while ago, but it still does very well, and it really helps a lot of individuals. Can you tell us a little about that book? Yes, it's called The Ever-Loving Essence of You, and the book is about um, creating and recreating a long-term connection with yourself. Um. Uh, when I was born, I was very connected to myself. And as I was growing up, I was very not connected to the woman who birthed me, my mother. And it took me a very long time to figure out why I was so connected to myself, yet so disconnected from the person that brought me into this world. Right. And it took a long time to figure that out. And when she transitioned and I sat with her for many days, I felt all the love pour through her to me. And I thought, wow, this is the beginning of our mother and daughter relationship. And then she transitioned. And what I realized was my inability to connect with my mom was only to do with her own inability to connect with herself. Right. And then it really hit home for me how important it is to create and recreate and sustain and 
to really work on the relationship that you have with yourself every single day. I think that's it. You know, that, that's some excellent observations and advice because I think people really, don't, you know, they need to understand that taking care of yourself and connecting with yourself is so important because I think the mind, body, and soul really needs to be in connection as one, you know, and we really need to nurture our bodies. I think a lot of times we abuse our bodies because <laughs> we think we think we're like a robot or a machine and we can, you know, upstand, you know, everything. And people don't realize it, but then they start to break down mentally, physically, spiritually, and they don't understand what's happening. But people have to realize we're not robots or machines. And we really need to nurture ourselves just like we would a baby. We need to nurture ourselves, I think. Yes. Yes. And it feels really good when mm -hmm. you're there for yourself. When other people are there for you, that will not sustain you. But when you're there for yourself, I mean, that's an amazing feeling. Yeah. I think that also boosts your self-esteem and confidence and self-worth as well. I think it, it changes you in that aspect. And when you have self-worth and you have self-esteem and you feel good about yourself, I think that can give you so much strength and so much courage to really want to do it all or become anything, that ideal self that we like we were talking about earlier in the conversation, that everyone has an ideal self of who we want to be. But if we nurture ourselves and we take care of ourselves and we really learn how to love ourselves and we do what our, our body needs and our mind needs and our spirituality, our spirit inside ourselves need, we could actually create a new person within us ourselves that can that can you know become and and help us make our our dreams a reality in a sense that we've so always had a lot of those dreams that people have are about connections with other people yeah. and that is the missing piece is the connection with ourselves so it would be a win-win all would the definitely. way that definitely would be a win-win. Now, where can people find your book? Tell us the title one more time so people remember it. It's The Ever-Loving Essence of You, and it is available on Amazon. Excellent. And if you had to give people some tips and, and explain to people on how, you know, about, about self-love or any, any important tips that people need to really understand or need to start doing, or how they could flourish, what, what tips would you advise people? Well, I don't think we need to be doing anything. I think we're all doing just fine. And then there's so much more. So mm -hmm. that's what I like to say. Um, but when you find yourself judging somebody, it that is a clear and accurate indication that you are in fact judging yourself in that moment and projecting onto another. Right. And that would be a great time to laugh and to be like, oh, here I go again, mm -hmm. <laughs> because that is a moment of disconnection. Yeah. When we are connected to ourselves, we are not judging anybody. Right. And we are not judging ourselves. Yeah. So not to get too upset about that. But once again, you know, sometimes we go through the day and it happens 15 times, you know, mm -hmm. and we just have to laugh. And remind ourselves that yeah. in this moment, there is something that we are not feeling good about ourselves. Right. And it doesn't matter what it is. And we don't even need to know. Right. The awareness, though, I think goes a long way. Mm -hmm. But then also to start thinking about ourselves with loving curiosity. Yeah. To be curious about ourselves, but in a very non-judgmental and very loving way. Yes. Yes, definitely. And that's I, a very kind thing to do. It is very, I, I think it makes us a better person because we're all, we're all a victim of that. We all tend to sometimes be judgmental and we look at others because it's easier to judge somebody else than to actually judge ourselves and look but at our we, own course. But we are judging ourselves in that moment. That's the yeah. only reason we're judging somebody else. Right, you right. Know, we're just projecting, even though we don't know what it is. Right. So, you know, step into some personal responsibility because that is where all your power lies. Yeah. Truly. I agree. I agree totally. 
Now, your website, where can people find you if they want to learn more? Because you do more than just self-love. There's lots of different things that <laughs> yes, you tap into. Are. Yes. So why don't you tell people a little about, you know, some of the other things that you do, some of the things that are on your website, and then, you know, people can go there and actually learn a little about more than just what the self-love and all the different topics that you actually help people with and you cover on your website. Okay. The most important thing is that I assist people in assisting themselves. So that's really important. Um, but I also have a service called the quickie, a lovely texting option where I text back and forth with people. And I love that service. And then I also work with people over zoom or over the phone. Um, all the podcasts, including this one will be on the website. And there's just a lot of good information on there, but it all feels good. None of it is too serious. I think right. we should not take ourselves too serious at all. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we should come to know ourselves and love ourselves and trust ourselves. And it's, it's a very feel good, worthwhile process. And you know what, before we talk, we tell everybody what your website is. I think that's a great a great comment you just made when you were describing your website is that we tend to be hard on ourselves when it's not necessarily we don't need to be hard on ourselves because we're we're not flawless individuals and when 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 we do make mistakes or something doesn't happen exactly the way we anticipated it's okay it's okay you know we we learn from our mistakes and we can improve ourselves for the next time I just, when you said that, it just came to my head. And I had to say it. <laughs> and laughing goes a long way. I am laughing all day long with myself, at myself, with others. It's It feels good to laugh, truly. They say laughter is the best medicine. And I truly it believe it. Yes. <laughs> that, you know, 70% of, of illnesses are caused by stress. So if we could actually release the stress and look at life in a more humoristic way, you know, it's a great, it's a great healing, a source of healing, I think. I think it is. Yes, I think you're right. Yes. <laughs> so my website is www.jamie-lerner.com. I, you know, I, you, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you today. And, you know, I think people are going to get a lot of, of really valuable information about how to self-love because you you broke it down in very simplistic steps but those simplistic steps are very powerful and if they follow them it could be life-changing you know everything doesn't have to be complicated life could be very easy if we make it easy but it's our choice do we make it hard or do we make it easy for ourselves and of course we're going to come across obstacles in our lives but if we learn how to really break down the obstacles and, you know, and understand that we make it easier for ourselves so we can move forward and really, you know, not destroy ourselves and, you know, in the process, you know, we could actually, we could actually become really powerful individuals that can make a difference in this world, I think. Absolutely. You know, it's been such a pleasure, Jamie, having you on here. Thank you so much for your time. I've had a, a wonderful time talking to you. And, you know, everybody talks about, you know, wanting to self-love. You learn more about self-love. And when you go and you list, write, list, you look at articles, people are so interested in it. So I'm so glad you came on this podcast today to actually verbalize it and talk about it because it's, it's so much easier to understand it when you hear someone who's very well versed and very educated in that area. So thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been such a pleasure. I thank I, you I, for inviting I, me. Oh, you're so welcome. And you have a great day. You too. Thank you.